All right, guys, a couple quick disclaimers before we jump into this. Uh, number one, I am not an electrician. Number two, my only electrical like experience is wiring harnesses on trucks, and that's pretty much just plug and play. So creating a system isn't something that I'm very familiar with. Number three, my mindset going into this was, was not very positive. Uh, I, I did not like electrical. I don't know why, but I was making it way more complicated in my head than it needed to be. But once I got this thing going and started figuring it all out, uh, I, I started kind of enjoying it and it started becoming a lot easier. So don't get discouraged. Number four, everything works, but that doesn't mean everything's maybe necessarily correct or that I did it the right way. Or maybe there's shortcuts to a lot of this that I'm not sure about. So make sure to check the comment section down below on this video if you're here trying to figure out your own wiring system. Because somebody that knows a lot more and is more confident about this stuff than I am probably knows a shortcut or a better way to do something or is gonna tell me that I totally messed up something and is gonna prevent you from having to redo everything. And last but not least, this is a messy spinning image of what JDS Outdoors did on his jet boat. I'm not gonna lie, I pretty much took everything he did and uh, just tried to imply it into my boat. He's very knowledgeable when it comes to this stuff. His video is actually what kind of like opened up my mind to see how I really needed to make this thing work. So I'll leave a link to it in the description. Make sure you go check him out. If you're newer to the channel and haven't seen my how I wired like my LED lights, uh, make sure to go check that out. I learned from watching uh, Basson NW I think it's 503. He's got a bunch of LED light videos uh, and they're really good. So that's kind of how I even learned to solder was just watching one of his videos. So I will also leave him linked in the description below as well. All right guys, so here is what the back of the switch panel looks like right now. So originally when I got this thing, there was this little jumper cable right here, right? And this went in up top right there. And then these two ran down into the tops of this switch and the second switch. Basically making all three of these on one fuse. So I pulled this out on every single one and that separated each switch and the cigarette lighter. So for example, this first switch right here is for my under deck lights. I took all the positive wires from my lights, ran them into this one wire, and then ran that wire to the top post in this switch. Then I ran a second wire from here back to the fuse box. And back there is where I was able to fuse everything instead of using just this one. So this is an eight switch panel, but I'm only using three of them for right now. We got my lights, my bilge pump, and the pump to put water into the live well. So instead of just throwing away this little jumper cord, I took the wire that was running from this fuse box and from this fuse box, hooked them to the ends right here, and then was able just to run the one wire back to the fuse box, which I had to uh, fuse again in order for it to work. So I don't know if that's too many fuses, like on one little area, or if how bad that is, I don't really know. I did that for both of them. This blue wire down here, there's like two lights on each of these switches and that's for the bottom one. I don't even have the yellow one hooked up to anything. Also my blue one's not hooked up. I don't need that second light. Um, it's just going to be it's just going to be another thing to uh, draw power out of the battery that I don't need. So all these wires feed up into this conduit, well not all of them, the ones that I could get to fit. So I had to add a switch here. This is the same thing JDS Outdoors did. So instead of having like my volts reading all the time and using the power from the battery to run that all day long, because I'm not going to need it all day long, we have a switch here. So if I ever need to use any of these four things up top to charge a battery, charge anything, or look at my volts, I have to come over here and turn that switch on in order for those to get power. The only thing that was completely different that I did not need to use a switch panel for was the aerator timer. There's three posts on the back of this. So the positive comes in from the aerator to one of these posts and then from the other post goes to the fuse box 
and then the third post is just your negative. So this is basically something that wasn't going to be able to get attached to the uh, switch panel. Everything runs down underneath there. Back here is the fuse box. I have everything labeled on there. This is the exact same fuse box that uh, JDS Outdoors was using in his jet boat. I will leave a link to it in the description below if you guys are interested in checking it out. You have your positive sides on this top part and this bottom part and then these are your negatives up here and down here. Your battery terminals are on the end. Originally this hatch was supposed to be for uh, the co-angler to put his gear in but uh, it's honestly not big enough for anything like that. And also this isn't very waterproof. I mean even with this cover on water can still get down inside here and uh, that would not be good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a Rubbermaid bin down in here. I'm going to get another 12 volt battery to run all my electronics off of and mount this to the inside of the Rubbermaid bin. That way everything will be waterproof and I'll have an extra battery specifically for my electronics. So yeah, this one is for the 12 volt front trolling motor. This one is the one that I have everything running to my fuse box. And then I also have them connected 24 volts for the, uh, I am putting a Minn Kota Traxxas 80 pound thrust 24 volt trolling motor back here. So that's how that's going to work. And once again, this is all for time being until I get another battery up there and uh, get the other trolling motor because then it'll all be 24 volts back here. All right, guys, I got everything hooked up. going to show you guys how everything runs. I didn't really talk about this, but this is the... Uh, bilge pump it's an Atwood Sahara series 750 bilge pump and I like it because it has the float inside of it and it also has a switch to it so this is how you test it you just turn this knob it lifts to the little floaty inside and that's how it goes all right so now we're at the switch panel you can see I have my three switches set these are my under deck lights The second one is the bilge pump, that's where I was just at. This third one is to put water into my live well. And now if we roll into here, if I turn this switch on, you can see that it's reading the volts. So to turn that off, just flip the switch down and it goes off. Now the aerator timer, we can put it on run and that aerator goes and then let's go ahead and test the timer all right guys so I'm gonna go ahead and put this aerator timer on one which allows it to run for one minute and then off for one minute so when I put it on there it should go off and then it'll kick back on in one minute There it is. Alright, so it wasn't exactly a minute, but it was, it was definitely close enough. Alright guys, so here's the co-angler uh, depth finder. It's all hooked up except for the transducer. I have to basically make a mount for it for the rear. There's two of them back there, but they're like for some old, really old transducers, so they're too big to fit uh, this transducer. And then here's the one up front. I don't think I've actually shown you guys this yet, but this is the Helix 7 G2. Uh, it has everything except for the side imaging. I didn't feel like I really needed that. It's a little tough to see on camera, but uh, I'm pretty excited about this thing. I also have to hook up the transducer for this yet. I had to get the mount for, because uh, this one's going to get mounted on the uh, trolling motor. And the last thing I want to show you guys is the uh, front trolling motor. Go ahead and hit the on. And it's going, so stay tuned guys. Not much longer and we'll be out on the water. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe for future content. Thanks for watching.